All right, all right. Hi everyone, it's teacher Geet here, and today we'll look at a writing strategy called sensory detail. So we'll learn how to include that to make our writing better. Now let's share screen and begin. The backstory for this set of resources is very interesting though. For my education degree, I had to do a final year project or dissertation, and I did one where I taught writing strategies to students through the SFV method, which is including sensory detail, figurative language, and vivid words, right? And so I have resources, slides for each of these, which I will then translate into three videos. So you want to look out and check out for those other two as well. But for now, in terms of how do we improve writing, especially descriptive writing, right? Which we will learn what it is in a moment. We'll look at sensory detail, which we will also learn what it is in a moment. So let's make a slide show here. Ta da! OK. So our lesson objective is that. We're going to learn how to develop descriptive writing through learning how to apply sensory detail. Now this video is very much like a lesson, so you want to have a notebook and a pencil or mechanical pencil pen by your side. So you're going on this journey with me at certain points. I will let you pause the video to take down your own notes or to participate in this lesson and then you can Press play whenever you're ready to move along. So first things first, take a moment to think about what this means. What is descriptive writing? So you can jot down some of your ideas right now. What you think it means? You know, there is no wrong answer. We'll move from whatever you have guessed, right? So. Descriptive writing describes a person, place, object, or event in great detail. Descriptive writing uses the five senses for description so readers can form a picture in their heads. It's like the words turn into a movie in your head. It does not just tell, it shows, allowing readers to be part of the writer's experience. Yep, yeah, that's a great giveaway, right? Descriptive writing describe right and what better way to pull the reader into that place that moment in time than through their senses right which is what descriptive writing sensory details all about so what are our senses we have our eyes so we see things sense of sight and then we have our ears so we hear things sense of sound and then we have our nose, we smell things, sense of smell, and then we also have our sense of taste and then touch. And you can throw feelings into that as well. What you feel. OK, so before we move on, I just wanted to point out how brainstorming is a really important strategy to have when you're writing. So you can brainstorm or you can make a mind map, right? My idea is that brainstorm is more free flow, is more, is more less restrictions, more free, so you can just take a minute or two to just list down anything and everything that comes to your mind, right? Like an example from here, right? Brainstorm, you're just listing everything down. Uh, for example, here, let's say the topic is your favorite food. So you can just quickly just list down all your favorite foods. But mind map is more organizing your ideas into main concepts and supporting examples and explanation. So this one is more detailed. So this is an example, favorite foods by cooking techniques. So all the fried food, you can put it under one category, one group. And then. Baked goods can be one category 
and then steamed food can be one category, right? So it's more organized and it's more detailed. So keep that in mind. You can either brainstorm or mind map or do both. So let's try doing that. First of all, we see a picture over here that I found online, a picture of a classroom setting with a group of students. So like the instructions, close your eyes and think about your classroom during art class. Brainstorm all the words that come to your mind when you think about your art class. Use the picture provided to guide you, right? So here, take a minute. It's up to you, really. We follow your pace and process. You can pause this for a minute or you can pause this for five minutes or 10 minutes. Just have your timer up on your laptop or your phone or even if you have a clock around and just go crazy. Brainstorming is just about writing any word, any phrase, anything that comes to your mind. If you want to draw some pictures, doodles, that's perfectly fine too. I'm going to give you 30 seconds here so that when you're done, you can click, the, you can now pause this video and when you're done, you can click play again, right? But I'm just going to give you 30 seconds, right? To show that process and progress of time. Okay, 28 seconds, 27 seconds. All right, it's 30 seconds, so you must have a list going at the moment. Hold on, let me. Let me see. OK. This is the picture. In case you wanted it to be more clear, right? OK, this is the picture in a bigger screen. All right, now that you've had your brainstorming session, you have a list of things, a list of. Things, people, objects. I want you to be more detailed and look at it from the perspective of sensory detail. So I want you to categorize. What can you see? Anything that matches that category, put it under what can you see? And then anything that matches what you can hear, put it under what you can hear, touch, feel, taste and smell. Now, usually if you're not used to using sensory detail, many of your words are going to fall under sight, your sense of sight. So this is your opportunity to brainstorm further in terms of what you can hear, touch, smell, taste and feel. OK, so here you can give yourself another five to ten minutes to just. Carry out this part of the task, OK? I'm just going to wait here for 30 seconds before I move on, OK? And your time starts now. OK, so it's 30 seconds on my end. I hope you've paused and written down your answers and. I have also put in some of my. Mind map, 
Oh, so my, my brainstorming down here, the notes here. This is what I was looking for just now. Yes. So let's go through what I've written. You can also go through and read out everything that you've written in your own time as well. So what I can see, I can see a boy painting, a boy cutting paper, a boy sticking paper together. And then let's make these bigger, right? Can we do that? Yeah, this is better. Yep, you can see those things. And then uh, what about smell? This is tricky sometimes, so you have to get more creative or imaginative here. So here I put in sink has lavender soap, teacher wears perfume, girl's hair smells like shampoo, and then for touch, smooth and soft brushes, because it's art class, right? And if you've ever felt the tip of a brush, it's pretty soft. And then what about the table, bumpy and rough table? You know, some of our tables in our national schools are old, so it's a bit rough on the, on the surface. And then what about the carpet? It's a rough carpet, okay. What can you feel? Happy, excited, confident. What about sounds they can hear? Squeaky sound of markers, you know, the, the screeching sounds of the board. You can also hear that in new shoes when you walk with new shoes, right? And then there's a window over there. So I thought about what, what is outside, right? And then you can always hear birds chirping outside. And then you also have your students' voices, okay? So through this picture, We've brainstormed a list of words that we can see, that we can experience here, and then we've also mind mapped them according to the sensory detail. And then now is where we can write sentences or describe it in more detail. Okay. This is just more information on each of the senses to help you out here. OK, let's look at that. So sense of sight. This description will help you out to describe physical attributes such as color, size, shape, lightness and darkness, shadows and shade. When describing people, look at their appearances. So age, built. Build, coloring, face and hair. You can look at their mannerisms, how they move, how they talk, actions, character, and feelings can be described. Okay, so if you're looking at what you can see, you know, you can describe everything about a person and you can describe everything about the objects around them, right? So think about all of this to help you out with choosing the mo most suitable adjectives and adverbs or even verbs here, right? How someone smiles, how someone walks, how someone talks. Those words can be used to describe them as well, right? So here I've given an example. You can pick a particular object or person and brainstorm more details that you can see about them. Yep. So this slide helps you think further about details that you can add into your descriptions, into your sense of sight, sensory detail description. So here an example I gave is that I can see a boy with short wavy brown hair and he has an apron with colorful paint on it. Painting on a canvas, easel, easel art supply. So this is an easel, everyone. And you, as you can see, I'm describing this boy and what he is doing, right? This one over here. OK, so take another five to ten minutes. Pause this video and try to write down some sentences focusing on each person focusing on a few people that you can see or a few things that you can see in this picture. Try to get, I have three here. Yeah, try to get three three sentences going 
can do more as well. And your time starts now. All right, so I trust that you've paused the video, you've written down a few of your sentences, and then you've come back, right? And then you click play, and then it, after 30 seconds, it goes, it moves forward, right? Okay, so I believe I have, I believe I wrote some examples below as well here. Okay, nice. Let's check them out. Yeah, there are tons of websites that you can go to for more resources. So these are some of the examples I came up with. Let's make them bigger as well to help you out here. OK, first one. Yep, you can always name your characters as well. Always a good idea. And so a boy with short wavy brown hair and apron splattered with colorful paint is contented, contentedly painting on a canvas popped up on an easel stand. The easel also holds a wooden box with art supplies such as a glass jar full of water and brushes as well as containers of paint. The boy is busy painting a blue animal beside a sun and a tree. Mm. See how much description you can put in just by focusing on one person. Next, Alia, who has tan skin and curly medium length hair, neatly parted in the middle and held back with a green hair clip on either side, is sitting at the class table and making squiggly lines on her paper with a yellow marker. Michael, who has a golden brown complexion, Really short black hair, thick eyebrows, and a button nose is happily cutting his art block with a pair of scissors. Mei Ling, with her signature hairstyle of having two space buns, is wearing a blue long sleeve shirt with a yellow butterfly at its center and is erasing a wrong answer on her lined paper. George, who has a pale complexion and ginger hair that spikes out at the front, is wearing an orange shirt with which complements his blue eyes. He is sticking purple color paper of different shapes on a light blue manila card. Wow. Okay, so many of these students here have been described. And fair enough, they all look different, right? They all have different hairstyles, different clothes, different skin tones, and they're all do doing different activities as well. And I hope that example helps inspire you to write more descriptively. OK, next, let's look at some pointers for your sense of sound. OK, let me make this big again. OK, when it comes to sound, some tips is to describe attributes of sound such as duration, tone, volume, pace, pitch, timber, and overall effect. So think about all the people you know and how different their voice sounds, you know? Some people have a really high pitch voice and some people sound really low, right? And some people talk really slowly and some people talk really quickly, right? That's pace for you. Uh, and then what else? Some people talk really loudly and some people talk really softly, right? That's volume. So. There are so many different ways in which our voices differ. And even beyond that, the sounds that you hear around you, you know, the sound of birds chirping like just now, right? Or the sound of your fan or the aircon in the room, even that white, white noise, the sound of a video playing, this, the sound of water in the tap. There's so many different sounds around you. And I want you to really try to describe them 
in your writing so people feel like they are in that room they are actually hearing that sound right and so now i want you to do the same thing you know i want you to try to create some sentences with the sense of sound you can pick a particular object or person and brainstorm more details that you can hear about them. So an example that I've given here is Ahmad, who is holding a blue book against his chest, can be heard asking the teacher a question in his loud and cheerful voice. OK, so which one is Ahmad? Yep, this one, if you can point him out. The one with the blue book talking to the teacher. Yep, and the, his voice has been described. OK. So I want you to pause this video, take five, ten minutes and really just create some sense sentences with sound in mind, what you can hear. And then you can click play when you're done. OK, all the best. Go ahead. All right. Let's see some of the teacher given examples. Again, I believe I have written a few under here. Yes. Let's again make them bigger so it's easier to see. OK. Let's look at the examples. Three students, Margaret with blonde hair and pigtails, Jason with curly black hair and Amanda with shoulder length ginger hair and glasses are busy animatedly discussing the details of their group project beside the class door. Margaret has a high pitched and melodic voice. Jason has a deep and sonorous tone, while Amanda has a quiet and hushed voice which runs counter to her wide hand gestures. Their chatter is in sync as they come in at pauses and bounce off ideas with each other in an organic way. Of course, the examples I'm giving you is very much over the top. It's a lot of description just to show you that just looking at these three people over here in this corner, you can write really complex sentences about what is going on, right? Of course, in your writing, in your essays, you want to tone down. You want to really just pick the best senses and the best descriptions that will really move your story along. You don't want to overdo it as well, right? Too much of something is bad too, right? If you put too much on a cake, that's not nice. If you took too much decoration on a cake, that's not so nice. If you put too little, that's not so nice too. You want to have that balance, that mix. But just for the purposes of this lesson and this activity, I'll just show you what really crazy, like really detailed sentences look like, okay? OK, next, Ahmad is holding a blue book against his chest, can be heard asking the teacher a question in his loud and cheerful voice. OK, that's the example that was given up there, right? The sound of birds chirping and leaves rustling in the wind can be heard from the window. Mm, OK, yeah. The sound there, I love it. Next, the squeaky sound of markers dragging on paper, the snipping sound of scissors cutting through paper. So these are just phrases you can put into sentences where it matters. OK, that's like. Some inspiration for you to add more sounds into your essays, into your stories. Now let's go to our next sense, sense of. Smell, OK, this is a tough one too, right? So when you think of sense, you can think of people, objects and places. Right? Just really dig deep into the smells that you like in life and the smells that you always smell around you and try to brainstorm first before I give you more examples, right? You can pick a particular object or person and brainstorm more scent related or taste related 
situations. All right, so yeah, I didn't really focus on taste for this picture because it's very much in a sterile like classroom setting. You're not really eating food, but if you can come up with anything about taste, go ahead. For example, I gave here about smells is how does your classroom smell? Citrus air freshener or the smell of paint or pencil shavings have a particular smell. So this is tough. So take your time, pause this video and just brainstorm some sentences with a scent of smell here. And you can start. All right, let's look at some examples from me, from my end. Again, let's make them a little bigger. Let's make them a little bigger. Okay, so yes, the smell of paint, crayons, pencil shavings. The classroom smells like sharp and refreshing citrus disinfectant. Yeah, nowadays we are always cleaning everything up due to the pandemic. So yeah, the smell of disinfectant is always in the air, right? Even beyond hospitals and clinics, even in restaurants and movie theaters and malls. So that's definitely something to be able to describe. And then the sink smells like the lavender soap at its side. That makes sense. George, who sweats easily, wears sandalwood scented deodorant. Yeah, we wear perfumes and deodorant, and sometimes our hair smells like our shampoo or our skin smells like the soap we use and sweat. Always remember human sweat, so that's definitely something you point out. The teacher wears rose scented perfume. Alia's hair smells like jasmine scented shampoo, right? Some examples from there. Even let's say there's a trash can in any of your pictures or situations, scenarios, you know, Trash smells really bad, right? And that you can always add in as well. Going back to this. OK, so we are done with sense of sight and what we can hear and then what we can smell. Let's go next. Let's look at what we can touch. Awesome. Our sense of touch okay so to describe texture of how something feels when touched or eaten right textures different things around you when you when you put your hand on them they just feel different right so again you can pick particular things or people and brainstorm more details to textures relating to them so one paintbrush can be soft fine ticklish smooth Right? So think about it. Think about what adjectives, adverbs you would use to describe texture, right? And I'll let you think first before I give you more examples to inspire you. Now, again, you know the drill. Pause the video, write down your sentences, and then play it. And your time starts now. All right, again, let's look at more examples before moving on. Examples, let's 
make them bigger to help you out here. OK, so some examples can be George held the flimsy and smooth pieces of purple colored paper and stuck them on the sturdier and thicker Manila card. Ansel brushed his fingers against the soft and fine bristles of his paintbrush. The wooden table has a bumpy and rough texture. The carpet under the table is coarse and fuzzy. The window panes are smooth and slippery to the touch. OK, so these are more examples of words, of adjectives that you can use to describe your sense of touch. All right, the last one here. Let's look at sense of feeling. This is added, you know, it's something, you know, your heart is separate from really like your physical senses, but I like to just add this in so you can talk about your feelings as well, which is always a great way to wrap up descriptive writing. Descriptive writing where you want to take a person to a moment in time and really make them feel like they are in this place or with the people that you are describing, right? So it's really good to talk about feelings here. Uh, let's see, to describe emotions essentially. So happiness, sadness, anger, excitement, all these feelings, you can write a couple sentences about them too. So you can pick a particular object, a person, and brainstorm more details about how they make you feel or how they are feeling at the moment, right? Or you can use your background experience of how you would feel in an art class. Students feel happy, you know, get to be creative or they feel confident because the teacher is praising him, you know. So I'll give you a moment again, pause, write some sentences about how you think these characters are feeling in the moment and then click play again. And your time starts now. All right, OK. Now let's look at some some teacher examples of how do we bring up emotions in our descriptive writing. Ansel is always ecstatic for art class because he gets to unleash his creativity and have fun painting. Mm, am I spelling this right? Is this the aesthetic for excitement? Anyway, Alia is always inspired to try out different color combinations for art in art class. OK, she's inspired. Michael always looks forward to the art period as he gets to follow his own pace and process in learning art techniques. OK, looking forward. Ahmed is feeling confident and relaxed in art class as he is getting praised by the teacher for asking good questions. OK, confident and relaxed. Sorry, confident and relaxed. Last one here. The three students chattering away feel optimistic as they are coming up with great ideas for their art group project. So they're feeling hopeful. They feel optimistic. Awesome. So yeah, try your best to add feelings as well or to show your characters having that feeling, right? Like when you're happy, you have a grin or a smile, or you're laughing. So show don't tell, you can make your feelings, your emotions or your characters known through the actions as well. So this is my attempt at showing you how, how a paragraph without sensory detail versus a paragraph with sensory detail differs, right? So let's look at text one. It's pretty simple. Doesn't really focus on adding, including sensory detail. 
So let's read it. All the students enjoy art class as it is fun. Ansel is painting on a canvas while Aya is drawing squiggly lines on a paper. Michael is cutting paper with a pair of scissors while George is sticking some pieces of paper on a manila card. Margaret, Jason and Amanda are discussing some ideas beside the class door. So it's pretty bare. It's pretty short. And so you want to always think about your sensory detail. What can you see, hear, smell, taste, touch, feel to add into your writing? So it's more detail. So I mean, this is overkill. This is too much detail. But just to prove a point, let's read this one through, right? So later on, you can find that balance and create a piece of writing that has enough descriptions, not too little, not too much, right? OK, so. All the students enjoy art class because they get to have fun and be creative while carrying out art projects. Art class gives them the space to be inspired and confident in expressing themselves. The classroom smells of a sharp and refreshing citrus disinfectant mingling with the teacher's rose scented perfume. Enzo, a boy with short wavy brown hair and an apron splattered with colorful paint, is contentedly painting on a canvas propped up on an easel stand. The easel also holds a wooden box with art supplies, such as a glass full, jar full of water and brushes, as well as containers of paint. The boy is busy painting a blue animal beside, beside a sun and tree. Sometimes Ansel brushes his fingers against the soft and fine bristles of his paintbrush. Alia, who has tan skin and curly medium length hair, neatly parted in the middle and held back with a green hair clip on either side, is sitting at the class table and making squiggly lines on her paper with a yellow marker. The lines come a little crooked as the wooden table has a bumpy and rough texture. Michael, who has a golden brown complexion, really short black hair, thick eyebrows and a button nose, can be heard happily snipping away at his art block with a pair of scissors. George, who has a pale complexion with ginger hair that spikes out at the front, is sticking flimsy and smooth pieces of purple color paper of different shapes on a light blue sturdier and thicker manila card. Three students, Margaret with blonde hair and pigtails, Jason with curly black hair, and Amanda with shoulder length ginger hair and glasses, are busy animatedly discussing the details of their group project beside the glass door. Margaret has a high pitched and melodic voice. Jason has a deep and sonorous tone, while Amanda has a quiet and hushed voice, which runs counter to her wide hand gestures. Their chatter is in sync as they come in at pauses and bounce off ideas with each other in an organic way. Wow, that, that was a lot, right? So this is all of the brainstorming, all of those sentences. I just put them all together to create this paragraph, to create this passage and this descriptive essay, right? Of course, in an exam, I wouldn't put too much details in, 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 in it as well. I would just pick the most fun, the most exciting, the most suitable details and then create a piece of writing because this is really good, but it's also too much, right? So I just want you to see these two examples. In fact, you can challenge yourself by writing something that has a balance of descriptions of sensory details because you've seen what no sensory detail looks like. You've seen what a lot, in fact, of sensory detail looks like. So maybe you want to create uh, something that is in between. And just feels right. OK, so that is. Yeah. Next, we can go to a different picture and carry out this whole process again with it. Honestly, you can find any picture online or any pictures that you already have and use it. It's relatable, you know, use it to run this activity with yourself. First, just take five minutes and brainstorm any and all words that come to your mind when you see that picture, then mind map it according to the different sensors. And then if you notice any of your boxes are empty and if your sensors have been neglected, you can take your time to brainstorm those as well. You can Google words to describe sense sensors. There's a lot of websites out there as well. Uh, or read a lot more or watch a lot more English content, English media. 
and then try to do this where you look at that picture and then you write a couple of sentences about the sense of sight and then you take another five, 10 minutes to write about the sense of sense of hearing, sense of sight, sense of hearing, then take a, another five minutes about the sense of smell, then sense of touch, and then sense of taste if it's valid, and then sense of feel as well. And then put all your sentences together and then you have your paragraph, right? So sometimes you feel like writing a paragraph is too overwhelming. Start with the picture, start with the image in your mind, start with a word and then a phrase and then a sentence and then just put your sentences together. Yeah, here I also created like a completely different example, which I think I can definitely split this video into two. So if you want, you want more inspiration, more examples. This one I talk about a school canteen. I write a descriptive uh, essay about a school canteen. So you can check out uh, part two then. Until then, that is all for today's episode of including sensory detail in your descriptive writing. It can be any kind of writing as well. All pieces of writing can benefit from adding the your senses into them. Okay, goodbye.